Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I do fountain pen, ink, and paper reviews, but not today. Today, I am going to answer a question. I was asked, do any of those cars back there have any significance or anything like that? What's going on with all that on the shelves? Because sometimes I record here in my office and you see that pens aren't the only thing that I might have collected over time. So, some of these do have some significance, life events, people, that kind of thing, and then some of them are just, well, cars. So I'm going to share a few of those with you along with some other things that you may have noticed on these shelves over time. And uh, yeah, we're just going to cool off a little bit here during the hot summer by uh, checking that stuff out. First, you may have noticed there is always a box of Tombow pencils. That's at least related to writing, right? These are among my favorite pencils. Really, really good. And I love that retro box. Isn't that cool? This you may have seen this at a tourist trap near you. I realize these are like, the, the world is all over the world, right? Made out of different stones, but I got this one in Boston years ago while traveling there on a family vacation. And uh, I just, I like globes and maps and things like that. But looking at cars, I know you have seen back there this 57 Ford and this is just a car that I collected. It's a Franklin Mint car. One of the things that I love about it is that this top opens up and uh, this folds out. This folds in, goes down, and voila, convertible. Just like in the real car, there's even carpet. It's a little dusty, isn't it? There's carpet down on the floorboard and you can see the engine, all this stuff. I, I, I'm a little bit, bit of a car collector, geeky kind of a guy. Uh, but this I bought because I've liked this car since I was a kid. Little trivia fact for you. 1957, this car had more electrical wiring than the average U.S. house. You notice the Thunderbird. That's just because I like Thunderbirds. There is a white Mercedes over there because I like that too. This is not the best thing to bring up at the moment. My apologies. But it is part of where I've lived and where I've been. This is a... Russian police car. That is a Volga, and that's a souvenir that I brought back when we lived there. While we're on that touchy subject, this is an old Russian car. Uh, I actually don't know what car that is. Maybe a car nut in there could tell you. This obviously needs dusting. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Anyway, really, maybe that was original. It came from the factory right there. Probably, probably so. Anyway, that's just a fun little car. This was given to me by a friend who knows that I just really like collecting cars. This is a 1937 Jaguar SS100, and my wife bought this for me before we were married in England uh, at a Jaguar store. So that does carry some significance to me. That's a sentimental piece. Not a car, but something that means a lot to me is this simple watercolor from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Just bought that at a tourist shop. I brought back several of these and gave them to different people. And this is one that I had left over after I'd sent these out to a lot of friends and family. Now, this is an old one. This was my dad's when he was a kid, and I used to love to play with it when I was a kid. And it's missing a wheel and has uh, definitely some signs of real kids playing with it. It's not just a, a shelf toy sort of thing, but that would be from the late 40s, early 50s. And while we're revisiting my dad's childhood as well as my own, this was his as a child, and he took really good care of his toys. And so at my grandmother's house, there were always things from his childhood, again, late 40s, early 50s. And I used to play with this all the time as a kid, and actually still in pretty great shape. Like every kid in West Texas, I had a John Deere tractor, and this is my childhood John Deere tractor that I used to play with. The funny part about this, I got this in the early 70s, newer than every tractor we ever used on the ranches. Another souvenir from Eastern Europe, little dachshund there. I used to have a miniature dachshund, and this one reminds me a lot of my dog Fred, so I got that and brought this back home, a little cast iron piece. This is kind of an unusual piece for me. It's not the kind of thing I would have normally gotten, but I do really like this one. And uh, 
being from West Texas, it could, I suppose, be converted into a belt buckle, and then it would fit right in, right? Used to wear a belt buckle, not this big, but definitely that color when I was a kid. And this is from Angkor Wat in Cambodia. I believe this is from a trip back in 2000. 11. Uh, love the people of Cambodia and I'll be going there later this year and I uh, can't wait to be the first time I've gotten to go since before the pandemic. You may have wondered about the guy on the motorcycle with no arms. I don't know what the story is behind that. I think my dad broke those off when he was a kid. This is another one of those things that I used to play with as a kid all the time and uh, still actually if I were to wind it up I believe it still works and drives in a circle like it's supposed to. You know a toy is old when the whole thing is stamped metal and has a wooden wheel. Couple of local pieces. This is horn coral found out near where there is a lake now, a man-made lake. But of course this is extremely, extremely old. Goes back to when Texas was underneath the sea and so these are two pieces of coral that a friend of mine found while they were doing some road construction and then he decided to cut that off and see how it would look polished and I think turns out really really nice here's another piece that he did really pretty neat when I was a toddler I was absolutely fascinated by my grandparents alarm clock they had a shelf on their headboard with books and this clock which has incorrect hands now but this was the clock. It's a Seth Thomas, and I just thought those gold bubbles inside that acrylic was just one of the coolest things. Those of you familiar with my pen channel, you might see a tie between this and the material some of my pens are made. There's still a little bit of a fascination with suspended materials inside acrylic, isn't there? Also, on the shelf here behind me, you've probably noticed the monkeys with hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. I probably got that in the wrong order, but as long as you get them all three, you're doing well. And uh, I bought this in Cambodia on one of those trips because my grandmother had salt shakers that were those same hear no, see no, speak no evil monkeys, and I thought that was cool. And then you've probably seen this colorful Camaro. This is one of my oldest personal toys that was not a hand-me-down from my dad's childhood. And I remember getting this for, I don't know what birthday, two, three years old, somewhere in there, maybe four. And I just thought this thing was awesome. It takes two double D batteries. It drives around until it bumps into something, I forget. Uh, but it was, it was awesome. I don't think the lights work anymore. The motor makes a whole lot more noise than motion. But this... This was 70s groovy. And the last one, because I want to leave some things as a mystery, is this pen holder you've probably seen on my desk during some of my reviews in the, there in the background. I was in the office one day thinking, I ought to find myself a good pen holder for here at the office. And it hit me. Duh, I had one back here on the shelf. I brought this back from Russia. It's one of my souvenirs and absolutely one of my favorites. It's a hand-carved very, very heavy stone carving, and it is perfect there to put the pins in the tree trunk, and I think it's just awesome. And of course, you got the little Goulet lollipop there because I love that they send that in stickers, but I don't need sugar anymore, so it just takes its place among the pins, all of which at the moment, you will notice, are not fountain pins. These are my sacrificial pins to divert them away from the fountain pins. Yeah. You know, you found pen people, you know, if you know, you know. All right, there you go. There's a little bit of background for what's in the background. God bless y'all. Have a great day.